this is Breakfast Creek and in today's walk I'm going to be walking from here along Kingsford Smith Drive all the way up to where the old convict female um, farm was, prison up at Eagle Farm. I really didn't even know it was there. I know that there's nothing left to see on the ground but to visit the site where it was. And along this journey I'm going to let you know why Kingsford Smith Drive was the road built by sex. Back in 1824, John Oxley and Alan Cunningham had breakfast here at Breakfast Creek, hence the name, with some of the local indigenous people. They were scouting the area here to establish the Moreton Bay Penal Settlement. There was a high population of indigenous people in the area, so they figured that, well, if there's a lot of people here, the land must be good. So here at Breakfast Creek was where they thought they would establish the Moreton Bay Penal Settlement. As it turns out, of course, they didn't. It's further down that way. But this area here was going to be where Brisbane was going to be founded. And it was during that breakfast that one of the, uh, the local indigenous folk, probably just for a laugh, stole Oxley's hat. Early in the journey here at Long Beach, <coughs> pardon me, Kingsford Smith Drive, this is Cameron Rocks, and it's uh, an area that was originally thought of to be the place where they would build wharves here for the Moreton Bay Penal Settlement when they were thinking that they were going to build that settlement here at Breakfast Creek. So Cameron Rocks is just a little bit further up from the mouth of Breakfast Creek. Here, there's a guy down there fishing, so I don't want to trip over his power poles. Power poles? What is it with me today? <laughs> um, so I don't want to trip over his fishing rod. Breakfast Creek, I should have mentioned it when I was over there just before, but Breakfast Creek was kind of considered to be the boundary between the European settlement at Brisbane and the indigenous people who lived on this side over here uh, uh, to, the, to the east of Breakfast Creek. And also I understand that Kingsford Smith Drive was originally an Aboriginal track leading from the areas east and probably north as well along the river and to Breakfast Creek. Breakfast Creek was uh, a major site of corroborates. One of these big walkways things, it's always like when you're parking a car, you never quite know if you're allowed to park or not. I've got to study the road here, the path, and just make sure I'm allowed which side I walk on. I'll tell you what, everybody here in Hamilton and Ascot is very fit. Everyone looks like they're so happy and in perfect health. It's wonderful, I'm not complaining. It's like a super race here. In the very early days of the penal settlement, Logan, Patrick Logan, established another farm up at Eagle Farm. But within a couple of years, it was decided to send the female convicts up there. And that was mainly because of so much trouble with the male convicts and guards and, and whatnot, soldiers climbing the walls and getting into the female prison, which is where the GPO is now on Queen Street. So they had the little farm up at Eagle Farm and a year or two after that was established, Logan decided to send all of the female convicts up there just to get them out of the settlement to stop all of the illegal intimacies that were going on. But it was only later, a couple of years later, when the women were established up at the up at the farm at Eagle Farm, that a proper road, well, a better road was put through, and that's this one here today. So the reason why Kingsford Smith Drive is the road that sex built is because the women had to be put up there to stop them from having sex with the convict males and the soldiers. So I guess it wasn't the road that sex built, it was the road that was designed to prevent sex from happening. And just something to think about, and this, this blows my mind, this whole area here, up in the hills there, and down, right down to the river, this was all rainforest. And as I was saying just before, the indigenous population of this area was really quite high and for many, many years after the establishment of, of the Moreton Bay Penal Settlement, areas to the east of Breakfast Creek were sparsely populated by European settlers and farmers because there was a lot of conflict with indigenous people. They were looking after their land, there was the, uh, the European encroachment on it, and then the, the police and various authorities would come in and, and 
raid the Aboriginal camps and ransack them and burn them to the ground. Just coming up on an old quarry, I think this was started about 1891 and the rock that was uh, dug out from here was used to help build Kingsford Smith Drive, you know, to, to metal it, to make it a bit uh, more firm. But it's now just a big gap in the landscape. I also believe the police used it for a while as some sort of training ground or depot or something. I don't know uh, what the police were doing here, maybe a barracks or something. The magpie giving me a funny look. I wonder if this area is going to be used at all. I mean, a great place to build a, some nice houses or a luxury apartments or something. I mean, the, the view is incredible right over there. Quarry Street. I think we'll go and have a look. Just notice these numbers on the ground. One, two, and three. What they're all about. And they're pretty small even just to park motorbikes, so yeah. I'm curious to know if somebody knows what those numbers are for there. I'm on Quarry Street. Let me know in the comments. This retaining wall here, I understand this is late 19th, early 20th century. It looks like that kind of rock you get at Kangaroo Point from the old volcano somewhere up north or wherever that was. There's another retaining wall back there, but I forgot to film it. I guess this is here to stop Hamilton sliding into the river. It says Riverview Terrace. I think, from what I was reading, I think that Charles Kingsford Smith, and I think he lived on Riverview Terrace. There's a plaque across the road. Let's see if I can get to it without getting run over. According to this, it says his house was here on the corner of Kingsford Smith Drive. It used to be Hamilton Road before it had its name changed. Born in 1897. All right, coming up on the Hamilton Hotel. The hotel was originally built in 1865. There's a photo of it. It was pulled down sometime in the mid 20th century and in 1964 I think it was this current building was put up and here's a photo of that what it looked like back in the day I don't know about you but I kind of prefer the old wooden one Now we've got a swooping alert for magpies in this area, but I don't really see where they would be nesting. I'll brave it. So I'm down at Portside here, and I've got to say something about this area. This is also a cruise ship terminal. And I don't know when it was built. It's been here maybe 15, 20 years or so, maybe a bit more. I really think they built it in the wrong place because they've built it this side of the Gateway Bridge. Now, over the past 15 to 20 years, ships have got bigger and bigger and they really just can't fit down the river anymore. So you've got this big multi-million dollar development designed to handle cruise ships. And it's only the older, smaller cruise ships that can get down here. Of course, there's now the new terminal at, um, up at Pinken Bar but in the past, ships would have to dock at Fisherman Islands and the Sugar Terminal, and it was really horrible. So they built this, and uh, then the ships got bigger and they couldn't fit down the river to berth here. I'm 
just crossing over, I think it's called Curtin Avenue West, and uh, behind me is the, the river, and I'll try and get across before that car comes. The reason why I'm here in this area is because the area just over here was not all that long ago mangrovey and kind of underwater still as part of the river. You see, over that side there was dry land and that was a peninsula sticking out into the, into the Brisbane River and the river came around into here. The after the war, they started to fill it in and um, eventually made this industrial area, which is now derelict and ready for development. And it says here, brand new Riverside Apartments now selling, Fraser's property. Heading back towards Kingsford Smith Drive, just over there is Nudgee Road, and there's the Avis and Budget car rental places here in front of me. Anyway, this area here was once the site of the largest indigenous camp on the lower reaches of the Brisbane River. This camp was noted for its basket weaving and fishing, and I have no doubt whatsoever that this camp would have been here for hundreds, even thousands of years. It was often raided by police and other armed forces, but it may have persisted up until as late as the 1880s. So this is where I am on the map. You can see where the camp once was. There were other camps along the river through Hamilton, but this was the biggest. And I can't help but wonder, is there anything here, any physical remains just under my feet? So there was an old bridge that was built, discovered a few years ago during some road works and road widening that they were doing to Kingsford Smith Drive. I believe the bridge dates from about the 1860s. It's either about here. But it probably was maybe not the first, but one of the very early bridges. Uh, we don't even know what the name of the creek was. The creek would have flowed towards the, the indigenous camp, which have just come from over there. Just leaving Kingsford Smith Drive behind me and turning left onto Nudgee Road. I'm not going to walk all the way along Kingsford Smith Drive mainly because the place that I want to get to, the old convict women's um, prison, I don't think you can get to it by foot by staying on Kingsford Smith Drive. I have to go up this way up Nudgee Road and then go through some back streets to get to it. Otherwise I would have stayed on the main road. Dear customers, we will be closed on Monday the 4th of the 10th for the Queen's birthday. Thank you. What are they having her birthday here? Looking at about 30 degrees today. Only a few little wispy high-level clouds. Beautiful for walking. I wouldn't want it too much hotter though. This is really interesting. This is more abandoned houses. There's one back there because it burnt down. That would give it a good reason to be abandoned, but there's more here. Flemington Avenue, a lot of development going on over here. Raise it up a bit. See, for me, this is what it's all about. This is what I love. It's beautiful weather, but it doesn't matter if it's wet. When I did the Paddington walk, it was raining that day and it was just as wonderful. To have the bright sunshine and places to explore. and For me, that's wonderful to just get out and be free. That looks like an old train station there. Just come to the end of Lamington Avenue and there's yet another train station right over there.
it looks like I'm almost there. I've just come across this sign here talking about the women's prison and factory site. So it's just further along here. This is really well set out. It's few people have gone past on bicycles, but there's hardly anybody here. There's no one that way. I got here faster than I thought I would, so I could have stopped off earlier and got something to eat, but I was making such good time, I kept going. Uh, it was a subway and a Hangar 7 cafe, neither of which I can get into. Right now I'm standing in the, which one am I standing in? Um, right now I'm standing in the women's barracks and it's a incredible place here. I don't think anybody in Brisbane, well hardly anybody in Brisbane even knows this place exists. It's, and it's not just the convict history either, just over that way, something to do with World War II, some sort of testing centre which I'll have a look in a moment. And also another layer of history is the original Brisbane airport used to be right here. Ow, get off. And here's a map showing where the female prison was in relation to the old Brisbane airport. If you've got any interest in history at all, I would definitely suggest come on down here and have a look. I've been here for about 20 minutes now, not one person has come past. All right, I'll go around and take a look at that World War II thing. What frightened it? <laughs> Heritage listed site, no entry, penalties apply. Uh, I fully understand heritage sites need to be protected, but for heaven's sake, it's brick and concrete. I mean, what's going to happen? It hasn't stopped the graffiti artists going in and having their fun in there. Doggy Hotel. The Eagle Farm Women's Prison and Factory didn't really have a uh, long life. It was only for a few years that it was in operation. It was in the early 1830s that the women were sent here from Brisbane. By 1837, all of the women from Brisbane had been shipped up here. Oh, but it was in 1838 that the decision was made to close the Morton Bay Penal Settlement. And I believe in the following year, 1839, all the women who were here were transported back down to Sydney. It wasn't in existence for very long. After that, it became, I think it was just farms, really. So even though the site has been used as, as, a, um, as an airport later on, the archaeology is more or less in, in, intact, so it's quite a rare survival from the early mid 19th century. Really well worth a visit to come and have a look at this place. This is, it's wonderful that it's here and it's disappointing that nobody else is here. I thought on such a beautiful day, bright warm Sunday, there'd be more people coming to visit. So I think the word has to get out there that this uh, Eagle Farm Women's Prison does exist and is well worth the journey. One thing I wasn't aware of when I got here was that it wasn't just the women themselves who were here working as convicts. Many of them probably had children of their own, so the children were being raised here at this prison farm. And I think that puts a whole other, you know, dimension to the story, that it wasn't just adults here, it was little kids as well. Thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you liked the video. If you like my channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you again soon.